Hello everybody, my name is Grace and today I will read two chapters of Who Was Henry Ford? Chapter 3 The First Ford Car At the Edison Illum Illuminating Company, Henry Ford had flexible hours. He had time to visit local machine shops and learn more about making metal parts. And he had time to develop his new engine in a small workshop he built outside the Edison Company. Fred Strauss, Fred Strauss was just one of the machines Ford recruited to help him build his first car. The two men got along well. Then they often joked around. Ford made friends easily. Strauss says that Henry had some kind of a magnet. He could draw people to him. Finally, on June 4th, 1896, Ford was ready to test his first vehicle. Ford called the vehicle a buggy, but his official name for it was the quadricycle. It certainly didn't look like a modern car. The driver sat on a short bench in the open cart and used a stick instead of a wheel to steer it. Its top speed was 20 miles per hour. As he prepared for the car's first run, Henry realized that he had a problem. The vehicle was too wide to fit through the doors of his workshop. He had been working so hard to build his dream car. He never measured the front door. He took an ask and whacked at the bricks around the doorway to widen it. He then hooked his budgie and his budgie and headed down the streets of Deriot. The test ride was nearly perfect. As he worked to develop his quadricyc quadricycle, Henry knew he was not alone. Inventors across America were racing to build automobiles. One had rumbled down the streets of Darriot just three months before. Like Henry's car, that one also had a gas engine. But other nearly, but other early autos relied on steam engines or power from a battery. Henry was convinced that his design was the best. The gas engine gave his car more power than an electric car. It was lighter than steam cars. The, the quadricycle was light and strong at the same time. Henry liked simple things that could work well and last a long time. Shortly after his first ride in the quadricycle, the Edison Ill Illuminating Company took Henry to New York. For a convention. In New York, Henry explained his gas engine to the founder of the company, the great inventor Thomas Edison. He drew sketches to show how it worked. Edison's advice to keep Henry was keep on with your engine. If you can get after you what you are after, I can see a great future. Those positive words thrilled Henry. Ford and Edison would eventually meet again and become close friends. Sharing, sharing ideas and even vacationing together, Edison would raise praise Ford as a natural mechanic and a natural businessman. But in the summer of 1896, Henry still had a long way to go before people would compare him to Edison. Thomas Edison Thomas Alive Edison was born in 1847 in Milan, Ohio. He received his first parent in 1869 for a machine that recorded books. The next year, Edison made a small fortune selling a machine that displaced the changing pieces of stock on the stock market. Then he had enough money to set up a laboratory where he could continue 
to experiment and invent. During the 1870s, Edison developed the phonograph for recording and playing music and the first physical light bulb. The success of the light bulb led Edison to start his illuminating company to bring electric lights to cities across America. One of his later inventions was a movie camera that used to film to record images. That used film to uh, uh, record images. Edison also designed a battery that Ford used in his cars. Edison worked in Menlo Park, New Jersey. He was often called the Wizard of Menlo Park. During his lifetime, Edison received more than 1,000 patents for his inventions. Back in Derriot, Henry improved the quadricycle, and his second version was larger and had a larger frame. Sometimes he drove it to Dearborn with Clara and young Exo. On the first visit to the family farm, Margaret Ford saw how proud her brother and his wife were with the new horseless cage. She and the rest of the family got the first ride in the car that day. By 1899, Henry was ready to leave Edison Illuminating Company. He was ready to start his own company. He knew this was risky. As later he wrote, many wise people explained that the car could never be more than a toy. But Clara supported him. The Ford was determined to bring his dream car to the world. Chapter 4 Building a Company Some of the wealthiest men in Derriot were now interested in horseless, horseless carriages. And luckily for Henry, they were eager to help him start his own company. Investors included William H. Murphy, whose family made a fortune selling lumber, and William C. Maybury, the mayor of the city. With their help, Henry created the Derriot Automobile Company in August 1899. He designed a new car model that was bigger than his second quadricycle, but he was not quite happy with it. The company struggled as Henry made constant changes to the car and never produced one he could actually sell. His investors, investors grew impatient, and after short, short, two short years, he shut down the company. Although the Derriot Automobile Company was out of business, Murphy and some investors continued to keep Henry money so he could develop, develop new cars. Henry was often away from home. He sometimes slept on a cot inside his workshop. During 1901, Clara kept a diary not- noting how little he saw of her husband. One day, she saw him only they happened to bump into each other on a streetcar. But as always, she knew how important Ford's work was to her. Henry was busy that year designing and building a race car. He didn't care about racing himself, but many Americans did. Ford later wrote, The public thought nothing of a car unless it made speed. Unless it beat other, it beat other racing cars. The first race. The first automobile took place in America in in 1895. Brothers Frank and Charles Duria wanted to show off their gas-powered car. They took part in in a race on Thanksgiving Day. On a course that went from Chicago to nearby Evanston and back, five cars in addition to the Durias entered the race. Two of them were electric, and three other were gas-powered cars, came from Germany. The course covered 54 miles, and it took Frank 
to ram more t than 10 hours to finish it. Al along the way, he, raced, he faced engine trouble, heavy snow, and a train blocked that blocked his path for four minutes. But the Duria vehicle won the race, hitting an average speed just over seven miles per hour. Per hour. Duria noted happily that he and his passenger, Arthur White, Arthur White never had to get up and push the car, despite all of the obstacles. Ford hoped that if he built a successful racer, people would see his skills as an engineer. They wouldn't come to know that his name and be eager to buy everyday cars he wanted to build for Irish Americans. At that time, Alexander Winton of Cleveland, Clever, Cleveland was the most famous car maker in America. Part of the fame came from winning automobile races. In October 1901, Winton and Ford both entered a race held at a track outside Derriott. Other drivers had plans to race, but mechanical problems kept them out. Only two cars rode to the starting line. Winton's car was bigger and more powerful than Ford's. Henry hoped that he could compete. Because his car was so much lighter, Henry's car was so basic he didn't even have brakes. Each driver drove with a mechanic who stood on the board attached to the outside of the car. Henry must, Henry's mechanics, spider half, also added weight to the car so it wouldn't tip over the sharp turns. Winton took an early lead, but the motor on his larger racer developed problems and he slowed down. As the newspaper reported afterward, Mr. Ford shot them by as through when they were standing still. At the stand, Clara watched them with pride. The people around her stomped and cheered for her husband, the local automaker who beat the legendary Winter. The wind convinced William Murphy and other investors to start a second company for Ford. But once again, Henry was slow in developing developing a car that he could sell. He didn't like working for investors. Investor. He wanted to do things in his own way. That desire for independence led him to leave the second company after only four months. He decided he would never take orders from anyone else ever again. Around this same time, Tom Cooper a professional bicycle racer wanted to enter the world of auto racing. He asked that he, Henry to build him one. Henry built another for himself. Both were almost 10 feet long and have more power than anything Henry had designed before. When the angels' engines roared, Henry said that the sound was enough to kill half a man. The Ford named the cars the Arrow and the 19, 1999. When, when it came to the race one, Cooper chose another cyclist, Barney Oldfield, to drive it. Oldfield had never driven a car before, but he, he had soon learned how to control the Mammoth 999. In a race that October, Oldfield easily beat Winton and two other drivers. Coop Cooper owned the cars, but newspapers reported excitedly about the Ford machines. With, with his fame soaring, Henry once again looked to start a company who would build cars for everyday use. He found an investor named Alexander Malcolmson who would let him run the company the way he wanted. In June 1903, the Ford Motor Company officially opened for business. That's the end of chapter 
4 and 3 and I'll see you in chapter 5. Bye bye!